I'm Krista Jacobson, headmistress of the Buddha Dukai, where we teach authentic ninjutsu and classical samurai bujutsu. For those of you who don't know what that is, those are the ancient martial arts of the ninja and samurai. Today in this video, we're going to discuss the Dakoto. Now, the Dakoto was a small scroll written by Miyamoto Musashi um, one week before he died. I believe it was written in 1645. And he wrote this particular scroll to his top student. Um, now, I think it's important to note that the Dakoto, uh, the 21 rules of life, um, and the Dakoto translates out as the way of walking alone. So sometimes people will talk about it as the 21 rules of a ronin, the 21 rules of samurai, or the 21 rules of life, right? But the Dakoto is a small scroll, and it was written one week before he died, and for um, his top student. Now this particular student uh, was also the same student that the Book of Five Rings was written for. And I think that it's important to know that, that Miyamoto Musashi was not writing books to be published for the world to have. He was writing these things down for his top student and for his top student to have. And um, the reason I'm bringing that up is because when you write a book and you're wanting that book to be written for the world, right, you typically give, um, you know, what you're talking about and then background information because someone who is reading the book might not have the same experience in martial arts as your students or someone else reading the book. So you tend to put a little bit more information behind everything that you're doing so that the reader can understand what you're talking about. But when you're writing things down specifically for your top student or someone who you've trained for many, many, many years, you don't generally go in depth on the how-tos and the background knowledge because you know they already know that. So when you're reading the Dakota and the Book of Five Rings by Miyamoto Musashi, you have to understand that he did not mean to write those for the general public to get everything from. You know, that's one of the great things about those that these particular documents from Musashi. And... Um, for me, Miyamoto, Miyamoto Musashi is one of those intriguing figures uh, in the martial arts community, and I'm a huge Musashi fan, and um, I, I love reading his works because I, help, I think that it gives much more insight into the mentality of the samurai. So um, w I will say this, when I, when I start using uh, books or references in the dojo, like I use the Book of Five Rings a hundred times more than I use any other book. I know that everyone would think, you know, I have a ninjutsu dojo. I should be using ninjutsu books as references. But in all honesty, when, I, when I'm when i teaching, when I talk about philosophy and, and um, you know, strategy and principles and so on and so forth, the Book of Five Rings, I use it easily 10 to 1. Easy 10 to 1. I'll use, the, uh, use that book. Now, when I am in class teaching, I'm going to show you guys the books that I do use the most before we begin. Um... The Book of Five Rings uh, translation that I think is the best and that I use is this one right here. It's called The Complete Book of Five Rings. It's written by Kenji uh, Tokitsu right here. This book doesn't have just the Book of Five Rings, but it also has the Dakota in it as well. Uh, but this is The Complete Book of Five Rings. This is the translation that I think is the best. And anyone studying the Buddha Dukai, I highly recommend this particular book. Um, there's another book. Um, it's called The Lone Samurai, The Life of Miyamoto Masashi. It's kind of like a, a little bit of a history into his life and his upbringing. It's written by William Scott Wilson. Here's the book here. So, And I use this book a lot when I'm uh, teaching as well. So in the dojo, when I make references to Miyamoto Masashi and the Book of Five Rings and philosophy from anything to do with him, it generally comes from these two books right here. This is generally the reference. Now, the reason I'm bringing that up is because when I start talking about the 21 rules of life from the Dakota, I'm not using these books as reference. Um, what I'm using as a reference is uh, the 21 precepts of the Dakota. Um, or The Way of Walking Alone off of MusashiMiyamoto.com. And um, the reason I'm using the one off that particular website is because these 21, of course, they all, they're all, they all pretty much say the same thing. It's just a different take on the translation, right? But the reason I'm using those 21 is because when I get on the Internet, I see that those 21 off of the, you know, MiyamotoMusashi.com or MusashiMiyamoto.com, when I see those 21, those are the 21 that pretty much everyone uses on the internet. And since I'm not talking to my students in class, if I was, I would probably be referencing these two books. But since I'm talking to the internet and the world of, you know, online martial artists, I want to use an internet uh, source that you guys can check as well. Um, because it would be something that you guys can use as a reference point, okay? Um, 
So before I begin, I just want to say if this is the first video that you guys have seen of mine, I do put up at least two to three videos a week on authentic ninjutsu and classical samurai bujutsu. So if you guys are into the ninja and samurai or history and tradition of Japan or um, Japanese martial arts, self-defense, make sure that you guys subscribe to my channel. And that way you guys can get the updates and keep up with all the other videos that I'm posting. Okay, so here we go. The Dakota, right? The way of walking alone, the 21 rules of life. I'm going to read the 21 first, then I'm going to go back and I'm going to give you guys a little bit of my understanding um, from each one of these 21 precepts. Number one, accept everything just the way it is. Number two, do not seek pleasure for its own sake. Number three, do not under any circumstances depend on a partial feeling. Number four, think lightly of yourself and deeply of the world. Number five, be detached from desire your whole life long. Number six, do not regret what you have done. Number seven, never be jealous. Number eight, never let yourself be saddened by separation. Number nine, resentment and complaint are appropriate neither for oneself or others. Number ten, do not let yourself be guided by the feeling of lust or love. Number eleven, in all things have no preferences. Number twelve, be indifferent to where you live. Number 13, do not pursue the taste of good food. Number 14, do not hold on to possessions you no longer need. Number 15, do not act following customary beliefs. Number 16, do not collect weapons or practice with weapons beyond what is useful. Number 17, do not fear death. Number 18, do not seek to possess either goods or thieves for your old age. Number 19, respect Buddha and all the gods without counting on their help. Number 20, you may abandon your body, but you must preserve your honor. Number 21, and the last one, never stray from the way. So um, I'm going to go through each one of these and um, give you guys a little bit of background information of each one. Now earlier, I was talking to you guys and I was telling you that um, we have to keep in mind that he never meant for this to be, you know, a book that someone can pull off the bookshelf. He meant for all of these, these, uh, excuse me, he meant for all of these um, um, documents to be in the hands of his top student. And um, so I think that if you're really going to understand what it is, if you can even start to understand what it is that he was talking about, you have to read more than just the Dakota, more than just the Five Rings. You have to understand his life, where he came from, his upbringing. Um, you have to read all of his books. You have to understand and really think about the art that he had made, many different aspects of his life, because he, all of that went into this, right? Um, I can say that I've read um, The Book of Five Rings, cover to cover, and The Dakota, cover to cover, you know, 50 plus times in my life. And I've, and I've read at least three or four different translations of each one. I've read The Lone Samurai, The Life of Miyamoto Musashi, you know, cover to cover, you know, 20 plus times as well. I mean, Musashi is just one of those things that it really intrigues me. And um, I just, I want to, I really want to know, it just really get very interested in it. You know, I mean, he's like, in Japanese martial arts, I guess it would be the equivalent to like a Robin Hood, right? Or a Billy the Kid, you know, kind of thing, or Jesse James. So it's just very intriguing individual, and, and it's it's to really get into his mindset and philosophy is it's it's exciting, you know, especially if you're into that the samurai martial arts. Um, but knowing that, my research on Miyamoto Masashi, um, I want to give you guys some of the things that I feel that he meant by each one of them. Not so much like my take on it as to well, you know, this is what I feel. You should, you should use these words, and this is what I feel it means. I'm going to give you guys what I feel he was trying to come across with, okay? So, number one, accept everything just the way it is. Um, uh, I feel that what he's basically is saying, and the world is what it is, it's not what you want it to be. And, uh, you know, he traveled the lands, he didn't have a lot of money, he didn't live in a home, he slept underneath the stars. And I think that, you know, he probably felt like he's been wronged a lot in his upbringing. Um, I also think that that's to to, to kind of understand, you know, take the world is what it is. I think that's a great thing of life, even coming from me. I think that, you know, the world is what it is, and it's not what you guys want it to be. It's not what you wish it to be. It's not what... Um, it's not even what someone else says it is. It is what it is. And I'm sure that you guys have heard that old saying, right? It is what it is. But basically when people say that, that means they've accepted what is, but they don't like the outcome. 
So um, I think that's probably its, its truest understanding of the first one. Understand that the world is what it is. It works in its own way, and it's not going to work in the way that you want it to work. You know, it, it has its own journey in its own way, right? Number two, do not seek pleasure for its own sake. Now, I do not believe that he's saying don't do things in life that are pleasurable. Um, because if that's the case, he wouldn't have done all the things that he did. I mean, he was an artist. He wrote things for his top student, which obviously he had a connection to a student. He enjoyed studying the martial arts. He enjoyed strategy. So to sit there and say, don't seek pleasure for its own sake, I think when people read that, they probably take that into a mis misunderstanding. I think what he's saying is gluttony or um, overindulgence, right? I think that's what he's talking about. Don't don't seek it because you need it. Like there's a difference between a want and a need, right? Um, so it's okay to have a glass of wine at night. It's not okay to have like five glasses of wine every night before you go to bed. I mean, I think it's one of those kind of concepts like don't seek the pleasures because you need them. You know, it's okay to have wants and it's okay to do things that you feel are appropriate, but don't let something, don't let those pleasures rule your life. So don't don't seek a pleasure for its own sake. For its sake, do it because, you know, you, you choose to have a glass of wine. You're not doing it because you need that, that five bottles of wine, right? Number three, do not under any circumstances depend on a partial feeling. And I think, I think all of us can relate to that. You know, don't half-ass something. If you're going to do it, do it. If you don't feel right about it, don't do it. You know, we all have that, that sense of behind all of us, right? Like, mm, shit, I don't think that's right. I shouldn't be doing that. If you don't feel 100% into doing it, it, then don't do it. You know, again, like he says, do not under any circumstance depend on a partial feeling. Number four, think lightly of yourself and deeply of the world. Now, again, this is coming from someone who lived, slept under the stars, you know, traveled the land, didn't have a lot of money. I think what he means by this is, you know, connect to the natural order of things, you know, in the big picture, you're not really the biggest thing in the world. You know, you are not the center of the universe by any means. You might be the center of your own universe, but you're not the center of the universe. So um, think lightly of yourself and deeply of the world. And I think, you know, if you can connect to the natural order of things and do things that are good for the for the earth, do things that are good for nature, do things that are good for people more than you do things for yourself. I think you'll find more pleasure in that and more happiness in that than always doing some than doing something that's all about yourself. Number five, be detached from desire your whole life long. Um, that some, comes from something I'm sure that's uh, very, you know, very um, Buddhist philosophy or Buddhism or Shinto and all those kind of be, this detachment away from some form of an attachment, um, but be detached from desire your whole life long. I mean, to me, I think that we should just, I don't, I don't think that there's anything wrong with desire and I don't think there's anything wrong with being attached to certain things. That's where I kind I will kind of step away from it. But I think for him, he's saying that you need to be detached from this because it can hold you back, it can make you feel things that you don't want to feel and it won't help, won't benefit you in the end. Um, and I do believe that was his mindset. I don't think he, I don't think he felt like he really had anyone in his life growing up and he lived off the land and that's probably, that is very much probably how he felt. But I feel that we need to focus more on the journey, you know, not the destination. So, you know, if you, or if you're, if you are attached to a desire, you will not get to, to a specific point. You won't be able to um, enjoy everything else along in your journey because you're only focused on the one thing. So I think that if you can detach yourself from, again, the difference between want and need, I think if you can detach yourself from addiction, detach yourself from needs, I think you will really reap the benefit of the journey in the martial arts and what it is that you're wanting out of life um, the most. Number six, do not regret what you have done. That is absolutely true. Live your life to the fullest, regardless of what everybody else thinks. I say this a million times. Live your life. Fuck it. If you want to do something that you feel is good, then do it. If you feel that it's going to make you a better person, if you feel it's going to be an expression of yourself, I think that everyone should live their life to the fullest. I don't think that anyone needs to live inside a stereotypical box. I mean, shit, I'm a transgendered woman that teaches martial arts combat for a living, right? I mean, I am outside of every social box there is out there. And um, I just particularly believe that we need to, you know, live our lives to be 
to the fullest. So don't don't regret the things that you've done. Um, don't look back on the past. Just keep moving forward and, and, and follow your heart, right? And I think that's what he means by that. Number seven, never be jealous. Um, you know, you can only be jealous for one reason, and that's because you want something that someone else wants. But you truly understand that jealous is anger, and anger clouds your thought pattern. Anger makes you very anger makes you very closed, your vision closed. So we don't want to be jealous because jealousy is a form of anger, and um, that does cloud vision. So we want to make sure that don't don't be jealous. Again, go back to you know it is what it is. Some people just have more, right? And you just need to learn to live with that and move on with your own life. Number eight, never let yourself be saddened by separation. You know, um, again, I, I'm I'm a firm believer in there's two things in life that really. The, I'm a firm believer that there are two things in life that really really um, matter. And they're, they're the big teachers in life, and that's love and pain. I think we do what we do out of love, and um, I think we are who we are out of pain and those experiences. And I think pain and love really teach us a lot. So when he says, never let yourself be saddened by separation, I don't think he's talking about love um, or pain. I think he's talking about separation from things that you become attached to, then in the end, it just doesn't matter, right? So stuff doesn't matter, and friendships and things like that, it's okay to have them but you kind of need to move on from them as well because, you know, the majority of people are going to come into your life or probably going to walk out of your life too. Number nine, resentment and complaint are appropriate for neither oneself or others. That is so fucking true, right? Um, complaints and resentment are nothing but negative energy. Negative energy is worse is than, it's worse, it's useless, and it has no, it doesn't do any benefit to you. I mean, if you, if you walk around with a, a negative mind, um, you can't be positive with a negative mind, right? So, being, having resentment feelings or complaint about other people is just not a good thing. So there's no use of complaining about other people, complaining about what they've done, all resentment to another individual for what he or she has done. Just keep on keeping on, right? Just brush it off and move on. Number 10, do not let yourself be guided by the feeling of lust or love. Now, again, I think guided is different than, get different than living, okay? It's perfectly good to have love. I don't think that that, again, I don't think that's what he means. It's perfectly good to have love, but it's not good that you live your life specifically 100%, you know, for this one individual and do everything that they want and be enslaved by it. I think you still need to live your life. It's okay to have love and to share those experiences with someone that you love and have a life with someone that you love, but you still need to be you. You don't need to do everything for this one person, right? And that sort of thing. So I think that what he's saying is, you know, don't let yourself be guided by the feeling of lust or love. Be guided by rational thought, by guided by the things that you want in your life. And if you find love and compassion and, and family and kids through your way, then, then it was meant to be. But if you go out and you just go looking for it, well, it's never going to work out because you've allowed yourself to be guided by an emotion rather than walking your path and be influenced by the journey. I think that's where he was going at with that. Number 11, and all things have no preferences. Absolutely true. I think that everyone should be open-minded and have no preferences with everything. It is what it is. Work with what you've got. Um, I think that whether it's weapons training or hand-to-hand -hand combat or life in general, money, um, business, um, relationships. I think there should not be any preferences. I think that people are going to have likes and dislikes, but I don't think you should have a preference to the thing where you're like, well, I'm never going to do that before you've ever tried that. And I think that's what he means by that. Don't have a preference. Don't be prejudiced towards something that you've never experienced. Number 12, be indifferent to where you live. And again, I think that comes back to the idea that, you know, he was a Ronin. He traveled the land, slept under the stars. And I think he's just like, eh, I'm going to sleep under this tree today. Um, I think that in modern day, we kind of do need to be a little bit indifferent of where we live. If you want your kids to go to good schools and, and uh, good neighborhoods and things like that. Um, and from safety reasons. But, I mean, you know, um, I guess you guys can take that one as far as you guys would like. Number 13, do not pursue the taste of good food. Um, again, I think we got to get into that idea between need and want. Here's a man that probably didn't have a lot of money growing up, didn't have a lot of money in his life. He traveled the land, slept underneath the trees, and he probably didn't have a lot of money for good food. So he's probably convinced himself that, you know, eating the frogs out of the, out of the creek and, you know, shit like that, that's enough to eating to survive is all you need to have. You don't need to have, you know, 
really nice foods and things like that. Let me shut that down. You know, I think what that I think that's what he's trying to say. I think he's saying, you know, don't pursue the taste of good food. You know, if you you need to eat to survive, you don't need to survive to eat, right? I think that's where he's going out with that. Number fourteen, do not hold on to possessions that you no longer need. I think that's absolutely true. Too many people keep too much shit. You can't take it to the grave, right? So when you're done with it, pass it on to somebody else that they can use it and they can use it in a more pos- in, in a positive way rather than collecting dust. Number 15, do not act following customary beliefs. And I believe this 100%. Do not live based on the idea of what they tell you to do. They want you to live by their rules. Um, I believe that you should. So I believe that you should live your life by what you want. Follow your heart. And if it makes you happy, go with it. And it harm none, do what you will. Right? So I think that you guys should, if it ain't harming anybody, Keep on keeping on. Don't live your life by the stereotypes that society has created. Number 16, do not collect Do not collect weapons and practice with weapons beyond what is useful. And again, we go back to the idea that he didn't really get to carry a lot. It's not like he could carry a lot of weapons with him around Japan while he's traveling the lands. Um, so I think that he's saying, you know, don't collect the weapons and practice with weapons beyond what's useful. I think he's, again, trying to say, you know, too much, you know, too much is, I think he even says it in one of his, one of his things, too much is, is, like, is just the same as having too little, right? If you're studying 100 weapons and you have 100 weapons, and you're not going to need 100 weapons, and you're not ever going to use 100 weapons, then there's no point in training with 100 weapons. I think he's really based on efficiency and what you need is what you need, you know, and just do that. Do nothing of no use, right? And that's another one of the, his quotes in the Book of Five Rings, do nothing of no use. Number 17, do not fear death. Death comes to us all. There ain't no use of fearing it. Just do what you can do before it's your time. Number 17, do not seek to possess either goods or fiefs in your old age. Greed in old age is worthless. When you're old, you need to spend time with the people that you love and get those memories before you leave. Because I see a lot of people, they, they hang on to things, right? And they, they they separate themselves from the ones that they love. And I, and I think that that probably eats them up more alive than what it does in reality so there's no point of trying to be rich or you know or sh- go up to all those you know all these nice um items and money and and and, and things like that when you don't you're not going to need it when you're when, at an older age right number 19 um respect buddha and the gods without continuing without counting on their help and yeah, respect respect buddha and the gods but don't count on their help right you know the gods will not do it for you they have given you the opportunity for you to do it on your own. So if they've given you the opportunity to do it, you can't sit there and say, hey, you know, please do this for me. Do it for yourself. The gods gave you life. They gave you the opportunity. Get off your ass and get it done. And I think that's kind of where he's where he's going with that. He's like, you know, respect the gods, respect Buddha, but, you know, they're not going to do it for you, you know. Number 20, you may abandon your body, but you must preserve your honor. We will all die. But your legacy will always live on forever. And that's an absolute truth. You know, you know, your body will be gone, but you need to preserve your honor. You need to put things out there that way, you know, your legacy can live on forever. And that's what I'm trying to establish with the Buddha Dikai and the Buddha Dikai Ninjutsu and, and all these videos and the books that I've written and the online dojo and, you know, martial arts, uh, ninjutsu and bujutsu mean everything to me. And that's what I'm trying to do is, is create that opportunity for my legacy of the martial arts to continue past you know, my death and for whoever takes over the school when I'm gone. But, you know, I think people need to keep that in mind. You know, we're all going to die, but have you, have you put a legacy out there, right? And if you haven't, why? What is it you want to be remembered for? No one wants to go to the grave for God. Number 21, never stray from the way. Bushido, right? The way of the warrior. And I know the word Bushido um, was a term that was um, brought about in the 1900s. And a lot of people say Bushido never existed. Bushido, or the way of the warrior, right, did exist. The Hagakure was written on the way of the warrior. The Book of Five Rings was written about the way of the warrior. The word Bushido may be a word that was um, used in the 1900s, um, but understanding the way of the warrior... um, and that idea 
has always been there in samurai times. They may have called it different things, whether it's um, Budo or Budo no Michi or Mononofu no Michi, which is written on a lot of older scrolls. Um, but So the way of the warrior 100% did exist in the age of the samurai. They may not have called it Bushido. That's kind of maybe a more modern term. But Bushido is a reference to the way of the warrior. And the way of the warrior, the way of the samurai, did exist uh, in the age of the samurai. And number 21 is never stray from the way. The way of the warrior, right? Understand that. So um, I've wrote, I've made many videos on that subject, so click my playlist so you guys can check that out, okay? So there are the 21 precepts of the Dakota, the way of walking alone. Uh, one more time, I'm Krista Jacobson, headmistress of the Buddha Bikai. If you guys are interested in authentic ninjutsu and classical samurai bujutsu, please click the link below and check out our website. It's at budodunijutsu.com. There you can check out our books, our products, our DVDs. Uh, enroll in the online dojo if you're not next to one of our schools. Um, and uh, again, don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you guys can keep up with all the videos that I will be putting up. Okay? So thank you guys very much for your love and support. I appreciate it. Until next time, take care, be safe, and good luck. And